It is 4.30 and we are starting our webinar. So welcome everyone and we are very excited to have you all here today and this is Ekaterina Stoops, faculty uh, e-learning faculty development coordinator and the topic for our webinar today is uh, group teamwork proven practice in helping with group team assignments online and the presenter Lean Luan will showcase her strategies for facilitating effective feed uh, effective teamwork online and this webinar will be interactive as all our webinars are so I will just take a few minutes to go over the house rules so during this webinar you will have opportunities to actually experience group work and of course discuss and share your ideas uh, to participate in these discussions you can use chat uh, to type your questions and comments there but we actually would like to encourage all of you to use microphones and speak if possible but then when not when you're not speaking please keep you keep your mics muted so that we're not getting any background noise and if you have any technical issues during the webinar you can uh, use chat to let us know about the issue you are experiencing and if you lose connectivity you can always email us at bbsupport at cityu.edu we are monitoring our emails we have several facilitators uh, in the room today and we'll help you get back and collaborate and now I would like to introduce our presenter Ling Luan. Lin is the program director for both the Bachelor's of Science in Project Management and the Master's of Science in Project Management at City University of Seattle. Her background and career go back 15 plus years in IT project management with uh, a specialization in software development and seven plus years in higher education. Lin has her Master's in information systems. Uh, Lynn ha is PMP certified and she is also a certified Scrum uh, Master. Her goal is to make sure that students are fully prepared to meet their marketplace demands with professional skills that will lead them to career success. And now I will turn it to Lynn. Thanks, e Katrina. Hi, everybody. I'm going to actually turn off my camera so it's not too distracting to me. Um, I tend to go a little bit fast, so if you need me to slow down, please text into the chat room that you need me to slow down, and one of the uh, facilitators will let me know, and I'll go ahead and slow down. So with the courses that I manage and I teach, um, which are all project management courses, they lend themselves to the ability to practice our craft as part of the classroom. One of the most important skills for the student is learning how to communicate and work in teams. Thus, um, present, present, uh, uh, thus are my presentation on proven practices that uh, I've experienced and, uh, and used throughout each one of my courses with uh, all the students. So each one of my courses does have teamwork in them, and so we've learned from uh, quarter after quarter how to improve upon that experience for each of the students and our, and our instructors as well. So our outcomes today is uh, giving you examples of proven practices that help facilitate group and teamwork assignments, understanding tools in Blackboard that work with team building, and participating in an open discussion that works with other instructors. What are the lessons learned that you've experienced in the past? So I want to hear those, and I perhaps I can bring those lessons into my classroom as well. So you'll see two kind of sides of the coin here. As we know, theory and practice is hard to teach. The perception in the workplace is that a good work, working team can accomplish anything. Perception working in teams on, in an online classroom is difficult and hard to manage and not worth the trouble sometimes as perceived by the students. This is always, there's always one student that completes most of the work and there's always one that has no idea what's going on, 
one who says he'll help out but never does, and one who always disappears, thus frustrating the experience for both the student and the instructor. However, I will say while a student does experience a good when a student does experience a good team as part of the classroom, it becomes rewarding and satisfying for, for them as well as, uh, uh, as you as an instructor, so that they are able to overcome all these challenges. In fact, I'll even go as far as to say that bad teamwork exists in the workplace today, and learning how to overcome those challenges as part of the classroom helps build skills and character for the students. So we're going to have our first group activity, which is we're going to split off into teams as part of our um, discussion. And we're going to, form, as we form our teams, we're going to talk about what feedback have your students given you about group work? Or what hesitation do you have in developing group work as part of your class? So Whitney, our facilitator, will go ahead and split you guys into teams. Everybody. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Good, good. So um, I want to hear, I wasn't able to hear some of uh, your discussions, but I want to hear some of the things that you guys discuss as part of your uh, initial forming of your group. And um, you can either speak out loud or you can uh, type into the text, the ch uh, chat bubble, and then one of the facilitators will repeat it. Okay? So. Anybody want to start? I'll just pick on somebody. Jeff? Yes. Hi. I shared, I shared a little bit about the uh, use that I've had up to this point primarily with just one-on-one -on -one with students and sharing my screen and looking at their papers and the, and the marks that I've done and kind of coached them along. So it's just been primarily one-on-one -on -one there. But with um, beyond the English courses, because I've been teaching um, some communication courses and critical thinking courses, um, that's something that I, I want to expand with um, as far as, let me just take a look here. Um, yeah, I think that's it for now. So your, your, your experience has been more of a one-on-one -on -one with students. But yeah, not many times, it. Right. So it's more, okay. more when we do collaborate. Uh, it's in class, I'll have students peer review each other's paper um, and then have, you know, other other times where I would do that one-on-one -on -one when I'm at home with them and set up a specific time that they they stick to. So the challenge has been if there's three or four or five people that I want to uh, meet and collaborate and have a session with uh, because of their jobs. Um, just one example with um, Boeing, uh, their, if their swing shift, so they're, they're going, getting, getting off work at uh, 2.30 Pacific time, and it's going to be challenging maybe for those on the East Coast or online in classes in another country to kind of fit that in. So that's one reason why I've probably not uh, pursued it as much. But, but I, I certainly would like to and kind of get, get ideas today on how I could take, get myself to the next level of, of using and the collaborate. Okay. Well, thanks for your feedback, Jeff, um, and, and talking about your experience. Um, how about you, Mike? Yeah, as, as I mentioned in, in the, uh, the room, uh, the breakout room, I have lots of experience working face-to-face -face with students in, in groups of various time, uh, various uh, types for various purposes. I've been a, a career educator for about 35 years and, and consequently I've done a lot of face-to-face -face, uh, group work. And uh, in answering the questions why students hate teamwork, uh, typically, the, the students that I work with these days don't really hate teamwork until, on rare occasion, they find somebody's not hold, some member of the group's not holding up their end of the bargain, uh, and then that becomes an issue. Now, sometimes we hear about the issue, and sometimes we don't. But generally, teamwork is an expectation for the kinds of students I work with in the educational leadership program. Uh, especially those who are interns in, uh, in schools uh, preparing to be education administrators. Um, so uh, one of the reasons that I'm in this uh, webinar is hope, hoping to refresh my memory of the 
Blackboard collaborates skills it takes to work with students in small groups online in Collaborate Ultra. Uh, as I'm going to be working with uh, groups of interns in a couple of weeks to help uh, them work in pairs, probably, uh, to go through uh, mock interview experiences with each other. Good, good. I, I hope that uh, we can help you do that as well. We'll just take one more uh, feedback from another uh, participant. Grav, what about you? Have you had teamwork as part of your classroom, or have you had any feedback about teamwork from your students? Okay, maybe not Grav. Uh, maybe Stacy or or Christina. Christina, sorry. Uh, yes, I gave my feedback to the small groups. So, and actually, I, I, I raised my hand because I had a question. Basically, my feedback is that as an instructor, I have not done teamwork. As a student, yes. And as a student, the main problem was blackboard collaboration. Uh, several times would, would disappear, would disconnect, etc. To the point that one of the groups. One of the teams that I was participating, we decided to use Google Hangout. So that's my question. Uh, moving forward, if I decide to establish, um, um, do teamwork online with my future students, do I need to, do, to use only Blackboard Collaborate? Can I use Google Hangout? More people know and they are more familiar and it seems that there is less uh, technical problems. That was my question. Okay. Definitely technology is a challenge as doing, uh, being a part of a, a, a team or group work. And overcoming some of that challenge is overcoming you know, how to deal with technology. In the past, Collaborate has not been so friendly. I think Collaborate has, gone, uh, has become so much more friendlier and easier to use these days than it's ever been. I, I personally really like Collaborate these days as opposed to when it was back then. However, if your students find those as challenges as part of their uh, routine, then I would say go to a place that's comfortable for your students to work as a team. So some students might want to go to Google Hangout and work together. Some students use WhatsApp app to talk to each other and kind of uh, start uh, assigning tasks to each other or just communicating with with one another. The point is in making sure that the team communicates with each other. And the other point that um, Mike brought out is making sure that the team is small enough so Sorry about that. Okay, so it's making sure that the team is small enough so each member has a voice so they can have a say in what they do as part of the team. Okay. The, some of the feedback I've gotten in the past about teamwork has always been from students. It puts a lot of work on us as the student instead of uh, the instructor traditionally telling us what to do or in a lecture format. The other is, um, it's over the same material that I didn't quite understand, so now I kind of have to actually work to learn it on my own, and I'd rather the instructor tell me what to do. Right? And then um, as Jeff was saying, uh, I think it was, no, it was Mike who was saying that, you know, teammates don't often pull their weight as part of the, uh, the team. So that really frustrates their team members as well as the instructors. They either don't communicate with one another or they don't hold each other accountable. And the other uh, frustration is knowing where to start. When you become a team, knowing where to start as a, a student uh, as part of the teamwork. Well, I think teamwork is very important. Research shows that students are more engaged when they're actively learning tasks over traditional lecture methods. And there's light bulbs that go off in students' head once they kind of get the concept and kind of learn things on their own. So I think teamwork is an important skill to learn. Properly structured group work can reinforce skills that are relevant to both group and individual works, which includes breaking down complex tasks, um, whether it's plan and managing their time or as well as the project time, Dele making sure that roles and responsibilities are delegated in order to plan your time, sharing diverse perspective because everybody has an understanding of what the assignment in it what the assignment is and then through discussion and explanation you can all refine what your expectations and perspective is. Um, Pulling your subject matter experts and skills together where you, where you can challenge one another on assumptions and bringing those questions to the instructor as well as the team. But 
as well as holding one another accountable and holding yourself accountable. I think, again, like I was saying earlier, the most important skill is making sure that you build your communication skills and developing new approaches to resolve differences as part of a team instead of just doing everything on your own. But also, I think it's important for students to kind of learn what their voice is and their perspective in relationship to their peers. Because once you're in the, out in the real world, you're going to have to do all these things. So don't forget, if, if you can design a course, if you, if you can design a course, supervise it, and assess in a way that promotes meaningful teamwork and deep collaboration, it is rewarding for both the students and the instructors. So this is a SWOT analysis. This is one of the first things I ask students to do in the first week instead of their student introductory assignment. I ask them to develop a personal SWOT analysis. This provides the students with their strengths and weaknesses where they can self-reflect on the things um, to help them get through their class, right? As well as their peers can see what their SWOT analysis is of themselves and decide do they want to be a team member with this particular person? And it allows the instructor to kind of uh, arrange teams in terms of, uh, of member strengths and weaknesses. I, I found this, this technique really useful because it allows the students to have a say into what type of team member they want, as well as getting to know their, their peers as well. Another thing that I do at the beginning of the class is I develop a project timeline. And I develop it in a way that aligns to the course schedule. So I provide the information where students can see what's uh, do what they need to do and what is accomplishable each week in different formats. So when they see one thing, it still matches the other. Does that make sense? Do we have any questions so far? I, I have one question. Yes, Jeff. One of the things that came to mind related to substituting, um, so to speak, for the SIA is mm -hmm. when, uh, when some of these collaborative types of assignments or, you know, tasks are uh, included, do you then um, not have a written discussion board question for that week so, so that they're not saying, well, this is just added on to what I've already been assigned and, you know, for points, so to speak? Well, I actually do this in conjunction with their weekly discussion board question because they're so used to their SIA. Doing their SWOT analysis is pretty much the same thing. Okay. Yeah, in place of their SIA. Yeah. Okay, great. Any other questions? Um, yeah, Lynn, I have a quick question. So um, how many uh, group projects per quarter do you have? Or is just one project that you are um, doing throughout the quarter? There's a, there's a group project in every class for every quarter. For every quarter. So it's one project per quarter in every class. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, so you are introducing this, uh, you're kind of building that community uh, from the beginning and that will lead to uh, more effective uh, group work collaboration. Uh, that's, that's what I see from your uh, SWOT um, uh, activity. So it's just helping them build those relationships, right? Correct. We uh -huh. build a relationship at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. The assignment is usually not due until the end of the quarter. Mm -hmm. So along those 10 weeks, they start building their relationship and start forming their teams and start meeting those, uh, those challenges as a group would meet in order to fulfill the deliverables requested of the assignment. I really love this strategy. I think uh, that sometimes uh, when we just introduce a group work without having spend well devoting time to help students build this relationship that's where the uh, the group work fails in my opinion at least in my right. experience yeah mm -hmm. Definitely, you're right. You know, sometimes the instructors, we have assignments and we put it out there and we kind of expect the students to just do it on their own. But um, not, that not 
that this doesn't always happen with students, right? They're, they get so busy with their time, they have so many other things to do that they just forget. So if you can build it into check marks for them throughout the quarter, it helps them kind of think about where they are or in the, where they are in the progress of the quarter to, to making sure that they complete their assignments on time. Okay, okay. So along with the um, SWOT analysis and um, and and the project timelines and the schedule. I also provide each group with a group contract wiki that's provided for the teams. As I uh, develop each uh, develop each class into groups, they each get a contract where they can provide their name, their information, their strengths in the areas of development all in one place so every team member can see who's what and what the information is. Along with that information is their availability of time which is best to contact them. But uh, as part of that group, you want to be able to discuss, well, how, how often are we going to meet? What's the day and times we're going to meet? Um, how are we going to meet? Uh, what are the ground rules for the team? Maybe the ground rules is making sure that everybody shows up at least uh, three out of the four meetings, right? Or, and, and what are your expectations for each other as team members? So once you have that contract written, you, every member of the team has a set expectation of they, what they know of their peers. Along with that contract, we want to make sure that we assign roles. The most important role in project management is the project manager. And you can either be the group, the project manager is the same as the group leader. But once you assign who the leader of the group is, then you can start assigning people accountable for deliverables of the project. You only want to have one person that's accountable for each of the deliverable. Everybody can help as part of the team, but you want to make sure one person is accountable so each time that you have a status meeting with that team or a check with that team, you want to see if, uh, if they, they're, they're moving along in their progress of what their expectations are of what they're going to deliver. Make sense? Yes. Oh, Katrina? I, I have a quick comment. I, I think the idea um, of having, having a team leader is a uh, uh, just brilliant one and just like somebody who can organize the whole group and that's his or her responsibility. I I really like it. Thank you. So as we all set expectations early and we've set clear deadlines and deliverables and approval processes, we want to make sure that along the project there are checkpoints. And in project management, we call those status reports. Status reports could be one-on-one -on -one with your instructor in the groups telling you, are there any issues with the team? How far have you progressed? How far are you behind? What can I do as an instructor to help you move along to make sure that you complete your assignment? Right? So these little checkpoints along the way during the quarter really keeps the students on toe and makes sure that students are progressing along. And then you get uh, issues that are that are raised early so you can address them. So there's no surprises either by the team or by you. The other thing you want to do as an instructor is making sure that students are held accountable. One method is providing two grades to counter the grade worries from other students because if a student does very poorly on one of their tasks, the other team members don't want to be affected. However, if you can split the grades, maybe 60% is a team grade and 40% is individual grade on the assignment, that can kind of alleviate some of the worries from the student. The other thing that I build into that practice of the grade is the team peer evaluation. This gives students the opportunity to kind of provide feedback with each other on what they're doing well, how they can improve better, and just telling each other, you know, hey, you did a really great job. I really appreciated how you helped me meet my goals uh, and complete the assignment. Christina, did yes, you have a uh, question? You asked more a comment about team peer evaluation. I think it's a great idea, but my experience in the past as a student is that the four of us in the different teams, four or five people, would always uh, say that, uh, yeah, you did a great job. So nobody would actually um, 
be frank about what they thought about the other person because that was going to be read by the instructor. So I think that TMP evaluation, there's a little bit of a tendency of leading to great inflation. So that's my comment. Yeah, team peer evaluation can be a little bit tricky. I kind of frame it in the way that team peer evaluation is just an evaluation of your peers where only you and the instructor uh, get to see, only the student and the instructor get to see the peer uh, feedback. Any feedback that's constructive gets passed along to the other uh, students. Any constructive feedback gets also passed along, but in a friendly way. Um, I find that, you know, I have to frame the conversation because sometimes a lot of students tend to say, yay, they did great, five, five, five out of five, right? And that's all they put. But you have to frame the conversation in the way where uh, this is an evaluation as you would do for other employees as they do in, in the workplace where there's a 360 evaluation, right? It gives you an opportunity to be constructive in how you communicate with other other people. And then it helps you kind of develop your communication skills on how to um, develop that constructive criticism for your peers in an effective manner. So I kind of frame it that way. It's not always successful all the time, but sometimes you do get constructive feedback from students that I pass along, and then the students, you know, can take it or leave it as they see fit, but at least they know that um, there are things that they can work on. Okay, Anybody thank else you. had a question? Good question. Observation, too. So some Blackboard collaboration tools is being able to um, Put your students into groups. And you can do that through quick links, collaborate, and then groups, and then assigning the students into groups, whether they're Team Alpha, Team Beta, or, or even uh, Blackboard can randomly assign them into groups. As part of the groups, they each have a file exchange where they can exchange documents. They have a group blog where they can tell each other about the status of the project, discussion boards, which is often used like chat for the groups, journals, and, and group tasks where they can sign each other tasks, and send group emails to, uh, to each other as a, as a whole. So I use um, the blogs as status reports. I use wikis as the team charter wikis, and I use uh, col uh, a Collaborate Ultra as um, expectation meetings where I set expectations as with the class as a whole on what the assignment is from the beginning as well as in the middle of the quarter I also have a meeting with all the class again to make sure those expectations are set in because once you hear it once it might not always sink in to you as a student until you start doing some of the work so you want to have that expectation meeting a couple of times again. I do one-on-one -on -one with uh, me and the student as well as one-on-one -on -one with the group. I can do, uh, I also do class presentation through Collaborate Ultra. I find it very effective. So we talked about some things that are helpful for uh, student groups uh, as in segment, segmenting the experience to kind of simplify the task as a whole requiring to produce milestones or deliverables, creating a group charter to understand what you're trying to deliver as a group and the expectation of a team, providing a student's peer evaluation so there's constructive feedback not only from the instructor but also as, uh, as from your peers, assigning a project manager so somebody can pull all the information together. And if you want, you know, sometimes students like to rotate those team assignments of who the project manager is because they want to experience what it's like to lead a project. So we're going to do our second group activity and break off into groups again. So this time, the scope of your discussion is discuss how students can effectively use their first group meeting. So you would probably want to assign the project manager and who the scribe or reporter could, would be. And the scribe and reporter could be the same person if you choose. And you want to discuss in your groups, develop a list of techniques students can use with their first group meeting, as, to, as well as a list of discussion questions that help students to kick off the meeting when they start meeting each other for the first time. You'll have seven minutes to discuss, and then we'll do a five-minute report out. All right, so I'm going to put you into groups. And it looks like um, 
Mike has signed off. I'm just making sure each group has two people. Um, so one of, there will be a mo at least one moderator in each of your groups, and they will put up this slide that you see now so that you can see it in the groups and know what you're going to do. And then I will send out a little chat when you have about two minutes left um, of your seven minutes of discussion. So I'm going to go ahead and put you in discussion or into groups now. Welcome back, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, we're back. Great. Welcome back, everybody. I know we had to uh, cut the discussion short a little bit uh, because we we're running a little bit uh, long on time. But I, I want to see what type of um, technique that you can describe. Just give us one technique per each group that students can use um, uh, during the first group formation. Rob, you want to go first? SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis, okay, good. To discuss the SWOT analysis. Clarifying the goals and deadlines, good, good. Um, what about the next team? Jeff? Yeah, we had we discussed a little bit more on my side uh, how I would adapt this to 100, 200 level courses since that's primarily what I'm teaching. So it was a little bit challenging, but one of the things that came out was just to be able to have, uh, for example, in a in a in a peer review type of setting instead of just exchanging Word docs via email, that to have them. To ask, of course, to say that this is an opportunity and collaborate where you all can speak to one another and discuss some of these things, whereas in, in many cases they're not as comfortable or confident about critiquing each other's work at that at that level. So just kind of bringing that up early and, and getting them uh, more comfortable because many times just the, the mention of peer review itself can be somewhat intimidating. Right. That's always the first big step is making sure that the uh, students can actually talk to one another and communicate with one another. Mm -hmm. And in my book, if you're able to get students to do that with one another and practice their communication skills, that's mm -hmm. a big win. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you, Thank you everybody, for, for your um, participation in the group activity. Now you did the first group activity, and we did the second group activity. What were the lessons learned that you experienced from the first group activity versus the second? What made things easier in uh, group activity one? What would have made things easier in group activity one? And what are some tips that you have mentioned in your discussion today that you would use in your classroom in the future? Grav, Grav says he would love access to the group recording. That's great because you can definitely record anything on Collaborate. And once you have that recording, you can uh, keep playing it for your students from each course to course or even demonstrate how a good project uh, group uh, communication would work. Um, anybody else? Christina? Okay, maybe not Christina. What about you, Stacy? Oh, yeah, so my, my mic was off, sorry. Yeah, so time management, we didn't have enough time to discuss. Or let's say even if it was a very short time, okay, you guys are going to have one minute to answer. So at least we we, maybe, we didn't think about that. I didn't as, as much, I guess. Right. We didn't get, get too much into time management, but there, you know, like I presented in my presentation today, there are things that you can help students do to manage their time, whether it's um, providing a plan out for them through the 10-week course, providing milestones for them to accomplish along the course, and um, things like that that will help them kind of keep up with their activities for their group assignments. Stacy, uh, anything you, can con uh, you would like to contribute as part of the chat? I know it's a little bit hard to, to uh, write all that stuff down. And that's okay if you can't because um, there's a lot of good information today that I hope that you guys can take back to some of your classrooms and that uh, we're able to provide for you. But understand that Blackboard is a great tool for you to use as part of your uh, group work assignments. 
So Jeff says the activity one was a good broader brainstorming exercise and um, activity two was more focused and challenging. And he liked both. And Gaurav says, I would love to use the tips we discussed. So the SWOT, the role assignment, uh, clear project plan, schedule, deliverables. Um, they're great for project management. I have a quick question, uh, just to interject before you all close. Go ahead, Jeff. And it's it's just related to these. Uh, I've I've been off uh, from teaching at City U for about a year, so I'm kind of catching up in uh, various ways. But I have taught um, you know regularly since 2007, and I'm wondering, are you going to be offering these webinars um, every uh, quarter or every every few weeks, months, and will they cover? A, a wider range, uh, not just more of the upper level, graduate level courses. Uh, yes, so I will answer this question. Um, so as uh, the faculty development coordinator, um, I, uh, so I um, not manage I coordinate, right? I was like, what's, what is the word? So I coordinate faculty development. And we came up with this um, idea to offer a webinar series um, this fall. And we started in September. And um, every quarter, we uh, every month, we actually offer one webinar. So it's three webinars per quarter. Quarter. So last quarter we had three different uh, webinars, different topics. This quarter, uh, three different topics, and we'll just continue with this tradition because it's been very successful. We have lots of participants, lots of questions, great discussions, and the topics vary. Uh, so um, as Whitney. Um, I think it was Whitney uh, mentioned in chat, we uh, record all our webinars. And if you missed a webinar, you can always watch the recording. We post um, the recordings on our faculty development uh, blog. So that's where you can find, um, yeah, and Whitney sharing the link uh, in chat. So um, next quarter, so actually, uh, we have one more webinar scheduled. Um, uh, for this quarter and, and it is in March and the topic will be creating reusable course content. So the presenter for this webinar is Erin Thornberry um, and she will be sharing her strategies for uh, using reusable content using and we she will be uh, talking about Blackboard's content system to organize and reuse content. So uh, if you're interested in uh, this webinar please register in the email with the registration link um, to all webinars was sent out uh, several weeks ago and you can always find the links to the registration uh, uh, for each webinar on our faculty development blog as well. So, and then in spring quarter, we'll have more uh, webinars that will cover uh, different topics. And I'm currently working on the schedule, so I will send out an email at the end of this quarter to advertise the spring quarter webinars. So, and um, so I also wanted to men mention that we will have our CityU Faculty Development Conference uh, March 28th from uh, 5 to uh, 8 30 p.m. so it will be in the evening and the theme for the conference is techniques for terrific teaching and we have uh, many interesting presentations and some of them not all of them but some of them will be um, live streamed so if you can't um, participate if you can't attend the conference in person, uh, you will have an opportunity to uh, join the conference um, uh, virtually. So again, not all sessions will be live streamed, but uh, many uh, will be. And um, the email with the registration was sent out today. So please register for the conference. And I also have one more announcement so uh, after each webinar, we send out um, an evaluation form to everyone who participated. And I will send out an email to you tomorrow, 
Uh, and the evolution form is very short. It is anonymous and it takes just a couple of minutes. And what is um, great about this evaluation form uh, is that, that you don't, uh, it's not just evaluating the webinar and, um, you know, sharing your comments, but also suggesting the topics for um, new webinars. So there is a question there that says something, uh, what topics would you like to see in the future? And that's actually where you can suggest the topic that you want to see in the future. And we can, we will be looking for the presenters who can talk about this uh, topic. So that's a great way to, um, to uh, see new topics and also get involved. And if you want to um, do a webinar on a topic of your choice, something that you're passionate about, let me know. Um, if uh, You can email me. Um, uh, Whitney, can you uh, um, write my email in chat? So you can email me directly with a topic or maybe several topics that you would like to present on and we will be um, we'll continue with this webinars next year as well so I hope that um, I answered the question Greg I hope I, I hope I answered your question and you can always email me directly if you have any questions about webinars and the conference so any links um, anything that you want to uh, know about faculty uh, development and the projects that we're planning thank and um, yeah thank you all of you for participating for um, questions comments it was a great webinar I am very impressed Lane with your approach with your programs approach to um, you know developing courses and then teaching courses I, I think that uh, the fact that you are actually modeling what you're teaching in your program is really effective it's not that the students just read about project management right all kinds of books and literature but they also get to experience group work um, it's it's I think it's really cool thank you And that is all for today. So, um, yeah, thank you and have a great rest of the day. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.